Hello everybody, my name is John. I'm from Monroe & Associates. Monroe & Associates is an engineering consulting firm based out of Auburn Hills, Michigan. We take a design first approach. We do that through benchmarking, teardown analysis, design optimization, and cost reduction. We also provide manufacturing optimization. Today, we are at the 2025 Battery Show and we are going to show you some of the places or the booths that we find interesting that we think you might find interesting. So stay tuned. Hello everybody, my name is John. I am with Monroe Live. Today we're at the Marion booth at the Detroit Battery Show. I'm with Jim Taylor from Marion. Can yes. you please tell everybody uh, what your role is sure. and all about your company? Sure, John. Hey everybody, I'm uh, Jim Taylor. Been here for 26 years, not here. We've been here for seven years uh, at every Battery Show, but I've been with Marion for 26 years and uh, I'm in global business development. And these days I'm specializing in the world of uh, energy storage and specifically uh, EV and ESS uh, for this show. So worked in a lot of different areas with Marion, but today this is our fastest growing, I would say, uh, part of, the, uh, of our business. The battery segment? The battery segment is we do consumer electronics, we do medical, okay. and we do a general industrial, but this okay. is our fastest growing. I, okay, so I mentioned this a little bit ago to you before we started rolling tape. I've been in battery for 33 years, no longer really in battery per se, yeah. uh, hands on. But all 33 years, I have seen your die cut components being fed into the line. I find it fascinating all over the world. Yeah, yeah we are a global company and we have been around for over 50 years. And it's great to hear you say that. We have locations in Asia and Europe, throughout the US. And, uh, and, and really we are, we are growing. We all do very similar things. We're taking thin, flexible materials yep and we're turning them into components that add value and that are designed by our customers. So we don't design, we, do, we build to suit the customer. So. Exactly. Do you usually do this with uh, steel rule dies or rotary dies? How do you uh, process the material? Yeah, as far as processing, we use both of those and many other uh, types of, uh, of uh, manufacturing. It kind of depends on the uh, materials needed, the volume, the tolerances, and also the packaging that's needed. We spend a lot of time on how the customer or with the customer, how they're gonna get those parts into their assembly. And we have a large um, field sales team that's well-trained and they will ask those questions at the earliest design stages, even at the conceptual design stages, we're trying to figure out how the customer is gonna use the components they're trying to design. Yeah, it really is a hand in glove type operation between your company and the guys designing the equipment so that they can get your stuff uh, married into their stuff on the manufacturing floor. Exactly. Some of that stuff, I imagine, is pretty tricky to process, squishy and uh, yeah. stretchy. Yeah, take a look at it. Yeah, yeah. Sure. For this show, we put together uh, with one of our vendors, sort of a hybrid. It's got both uh, uh, cylindrical cells in there. It's got prismatic cells. Really, what it's designed to highlight is some of our applications. And again, we're not making the raw materials here. We're taking the raw materials, and we do work with the global leading manufacturers. I'm not gonna name them, but they are, throughout the world, the global leaders. And, and what they do is they make the raw material. And we help our customers understand the best materials for their given application. So in the instance of these cylindrical cells here, this kind of represents a, uh, uh, an insulating layer that helps with potting. A lot of times these uh, cylindrical arrays oh, yeah. need to be potted. Yeah. And a lot of times on top of there, there'll be a collector plate. This is a very rudimentary mm -hmm. example of a collector plate. And because it's metal, it sometimes needs to be insulated. So we've got a couple of different examples of insulating films here, yep, makes sense. both a paper and both a high dielectric film. So uh, batteries also get very hot. So we've got an example of a thermal uh, gap pad, gap filler. Uh, been, been around for decades, used extensively in the battery uh, space. I think the acronym is TIM, Thermo Interface Material, right? Exactly, a TIM. And we, we do use the pads and we also distribute the uh, dispensable versions because sometimes uh, in a given uh, topography, there's just not enough space to, uh, to get a pad thick enough. So the dispensable is a very uh, uh, well-known option for us. Very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also important is to take care of the battery itself and the cells. And we, uh, we work with a lot of different materials to help with the shrinking and swelling that, uh, that even prismatic cells will do. So a lot of times customers will ask us for a uh, anti-propagation uh, layer in between there. But oftentimes you don't need anything at all other than a, a cushion. And we work with a lot of polyurethanes and silicones that go in between the cells to act as a cushion and take up that, 
that uh, shrinking and swelling that takes place. And, and also, I think uh, variation on the plant floor. This is like a tolerant stack up to tolerant stack up take up that variation. For exactly right, because what they'll do is they'll bond these together very tightly. There, there does yeah. need to be some of that. Uh, and there's well. a squish factor too that they have to adhere to. They call it compression force deflection. Yes, yeah, CFD is a common term, and, and we work very closely with the uh, raw material manufacturers of that to help help dial that in. It's a very precise uh, uh, calculation that needs to be done. Some customers uh, worried about thermal propagation, and that's probably within the battery space our fastest growing uh, topic. It's it's on the minds of every. Um, engineer who is using a certain type of battery chemistry. There's some that are that are less likely to be experiencing thermal runaway, but when they do, um, we have all kinds of uh, inorganic papers and uh, other elastomers that can help act as a flame barrier, but also provide that cushion as well. So it's actually uh, creating two functions with one component. So it's a uh, it's a nice way to, um, to get more bang for your buck that way. So try to help eliminate or minimize thermal runaways. E like exactly. Much key. Yeah, what we do is there's two types. There's passive and, and what's, that's where we focus is on the passive. So passive. It's, it's, it sits there benignly until an event hopefully doesn't occur. But if it does, it's there to uh, first to line of defense. That. First line of defense. Okay. Yeah. If you want to come over here a little bit, we'll kind of peek over this table. Lots of different options. This kind of really shows on a greater level, the, the level of detail that we're doing. So I mentioned uh, uh, dielectric barriers. Here's an extreme example of what we can do with a simple thick piece of film. We can put scores in there, we can put bends. Complex. You can actually, yeah, you can actually fold that into a three-dimensional part that acts as a, uh, a shield uh, for uh, in a, in a dielectric barrier. So one example of some of the and uh, you, we do. Not only with this stuff, but with this complicated thing, Again, hand in glove with the design engineer on the equipment yeah. side. He's got to be able to get that yes. from the reel pick in place onto his own product. Yeah, exactly right. And you mentioned reel. We, we, most of the parts we make have an adhesive on there. And sometimes it's just for fixturing until the entire assembly is yeah. put together. But yeah, these types of converted parts are generally rotary die cut. You mentioned that earlier. And these can be put in place robotically. So there are ro we work very closely with some robotic uh, uh, companies out there that will pick and place these very uh, fast too very fast very accurate yeah. and then uh, we have to be accurate as well because if it's if it, uh, there's some very tight tolerances of the part that needs to be located on the uh, on this reel so it if it picks it up off balance it's going to put it in place off balance so. i think many years ago before the robots got so sophisticated i think i saw webs from you with registration points that's true. And now they rely yep. on vision from the robot. They right? do. They do rely on vision. They can. They can make some um, accommodations to that. Uh, it, the, the, what you were talking about are these pin feed holes. Yes. Yeah. There yeah. You go. That's that's actually still used. Uh, we do a lot of progressive die cutting, so where you're stamping each feature in a progressive. Yeah, so you uh, need die. it with your process. Yes. yes. Exactly okay. right. Makes sense. So, so I would say we've covered a lot of ground. You know, the thermal management I think is is something that not just much thermal propagation, but thermal management is another area keeping the batteries cool is important and then we've got lots of different uh, ways of, of converting uh, die cut parts that are thermally conductive um, and then also if we go back to this yeah, sure part is this actually cut this way or is it cut separately and then joined together and married together yeah it's actually cut that way and you can okay. see that we've, we've not wasted any material okay. yeah. in between so that's an example of us working closely with our process engineers not to waste very expensive material. So that's a, it's a bonus for, for the customer and it's also a way to make us more competitive. Mm -hmm. um, what this is a laminate? Th that's actually a lamination and I kind of flip this around. This is put in place by hand. Oh. So these are tabs that get pulled apart and then put in place uh, by hand. So it's, it's more of a, uh, a manual uh, operation. Okay. So. Um, well, sometimes then, you have to have the manual ops, right? Exactly. If, if the volume isn't there, if the uh, intricacy is just uh, you know not there. Um, so this is squishy stuff we were talking about earlier. Yep, that's um, a urethane foam uh, used extensively inside the battery pack. This one helps cushion the bottom cool plate, co uh, cooling plate, okay, and keep it uh, pressed up against the uh, the thermal pads, and then that gets pressed up against the cells. So what it's doing is it's making a better uh, a thermal path for the uh, conductive material, which is oftentimes a gap pad. 
Is this harder to process on your side than uh, some of the other materials that we see here? You know, I would say not really. No, it's, it's actually uh, something that we can as easily as water jet cut. So very old school. Oh, it's, okay. it's thick. Yeah. It's, it's not an extremely high volume, so it can be water jet cut. But uh, no, they, we're doing this all around the world. Um, you know, what, what, we just opened a plant in India, so that's our newest uh, uh, greenfield uh, manufacturing okay. site. Okay, nice. Very, very busy there already, and uh, keeping our facilities in uh, Suzhou and Shenzhen and some of the others equally busy. The nice thing about us is that we communicate very well with all those locations. They're all, we're all one big happy family, and oftentimes when I'm working with an engineer, here in the United States, if uh, manufacturing's over in Asia, it's important to have that, that closed loop of communications. And we hire people who speak and communicate well uh, uh, globally, so it makes for a very seamless uh, supply chain for our customers. Mm. Plus you have a well-recognized name too. I mean, that, that helps, that goes it, a long way. It does help, uh, and I, I appreciate you saying that. It's a, it's a 50-year-old family company, and uh, 50 yeah. years. Yeah, 50 years, family-owned, uh, not for sale. Not, it's. Uh, we're just growing, uh, you know, one step at a time. So nice. Well, uh, <clears throat> with you doing what you do, you're going to grow even more so. Oh, thank I you. I believe, John. Is appreciate you coming in. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Jim. Take care. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much.